Hey, I'm Jenny Champeau. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and we're so happy to be joined today by Dr. Sharon Harris. Welcome, Sharon. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Dr. Harris is an associate professor of English at BYU, where she studies the intersections of literature and music in the early modern period. She's also the author of um, a book in the brief theological introductions to the Book of Mormon, and she wrote on um, the Itty Bitty Books, um, Enos, Jerem, and Omni. Um, it's a great book. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, she she has some, some great points in there. To, today, we're looking at um, the chapters Mormon 7 through 9. And the artwork is by an artist that you're probably not familiar with. His name is Larry Prestwich. This piece is called and I even remain alone. He did this in 1964, um, but uh, really it hasn't um, been seen very often publicly. Um, so we're going to introduce you to it today. Um, Sharon, would you start by telling us who is depicted in this piece and how it relates to um, particularly to, to Mormon chapter eight? Right. Yeah. This is so the section for Come Follow Me this week is Mormon seven through nine which might make us think that this is Mormon, but it's not. This is Moroni. Uh, and Moroni takes over the record for the last three chapters of the book Mormon um, and then ends up putting together the, the compilation for that becomes the Book of Ether. But here, where he's finishing out his father's record, it seems that he is expecting that this is the end of, of the Nephite record that he's finishing uh, the plates. Um, and so right here in, in uh, well, I guess I'll give you the context of all of it. Chapter seven, he uh, inherits the plates and Mormon, his father, has his farewell. And then in chapter seven, Moroni says, and now behold, I would speak somewhat unto the remnant of this people which are spared. And we have seen since the beginning of the Book of Mormon with the small plates that this book is directed to uh, a surviving remnant of the Lehite people. A lot of times we think that that's going to be the Lamanites, uh, but it at this point, Nephites and Lamanites are, are, are somewhat mixed together, at least in terms of lineage. Sometimes the Nephites are those that inherited the Christian tradition. The Lamanites are those that might oppose that or be outside of that tradition. There's lots of different ways that these um, identities become crossed. And now we're several hundred years past the coming of Christ. And so Moroni is watching that the Lamanites are going to destroy his people. And as we'll see with this artwork, it gets to where there are no Nephites left except for him. Hmm. And uh, and so he, in the record, is turning to face his audience. If you've heard about in film breaking the fourth wall, uh, where usually the film is is recording the interactions of the people on film or the characters, but you'll get something like in the TV show The Office, or there's a famous example from uh, Hitchcock's Rear Window or something, where somebody turns and looks right at the camera. Yeah. And and this this is kind of what what Moroni is doing here. He he says, and now behold, I would speak somewhat unto the remnant of this people who were spared. And so he's addressing the future readers, and we would say the latter day readers of the Book of Mormon, particularly the those who are remain who those who remain are the remnant of the Lehites. And then he's, and he knows that this is kind of a long shot. He says, I would, I would speak somewhat to this remnant, if it so be that God may give unto them my words. If this survives and it gets into their hands, that they may know the things of their fathers. Yea, I speak unto you, ye remnant of the house of Israel. And this is the words which I speak. Know ye that ye are of the house of Israel. Um, in some respects, I think this is such a striking address. What would it be like if you found out uh, that you were part of a family that you didn't know that you were part of, right? Or if you were part of this heritage. I mean, you, you, we've heard stories about this, or maybe somebody who's separated from their family when they're young or something like this, and then they find out who they are. Maybe that's, I mean, there are some differences, but in some respects, that's what Moroni is trying to say. He's saying, I'm speaking to you. Did you know that you're part of this covenant? Mm -hmm. um and 
he is saying, know you that the house of Israel, know that you must come unto repentance or you cannot be saved. Know that you must lay down your weapons of war. You must come to the knowledge of your fathers and repent and believe in Jesus Christ that he is the son of God. This is all chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. And he testifies of Christ and he then in verse 8 invites um, the people he's addressing. This is what the hope of the of the record is is intended for. Therefore, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, and lay hold upon the gospel of Christ, which shall be set before you. Not only in this record, but also in the record which shall come unto the Gentiles from the Jews. And so he's quite overtly saying, this is intended to come together with the Bible um, and testify of, of Christ and gather together this covenant people of Israel. Um, and then I, I love this. He says, uh, this is written for the intent that you may believe that. So if we're, 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 this record is here so that you can believe the Bible. The Bible is to, is to reinforce this record. And it is an attempt to gather this covenant people, this covenant family together. And then you'll know that you're a remnant of the seed of Jacob, a remnant of the Lehites. Um, and then you can follow the example of Jesus and be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. All of this is chapter seven. Okay. So that's kind of the prelude. Um, right. But then where do we get to this to this image here? <clears throat> he says, uh, behold, and he, he names himself, behold, I, Moroni, do finish the record of my father. And I have a few things to write. Um, and he explains that there was a huge, great and tremendous battle at Camorra. And, and he says in verse three, and my father also was killed by them. Mm-hmm. And then we get the title of this image. And even I remain alone. Mm-hmm. And so everybody else has been killed and he's the sole survivor and he's running from um, those that are hunting him and uh, trying to keep track of the records and preserve them and write a few things if he can before he dies. Um, right. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. That that I really like the emphasis on the record and, and the way it reminds us of our past and our heritage, but also there's this sort of future looking project with the record too. Um, but right here we have, we have Moroni with his hands on this record that he's, that he's finished and that he's preserved. Um, and I know Larry Prestwich, um, he studied art at BYU in the 1960s Um there he got involved with the um, artists that were working in the art and belief movement. And they, you know, they focus a lot on the human figure and trying to add this new kind of um, religious symbolism to Latter-day Saint art. Um, This piece that that Larry did is probably a little before he was really, um, uh, I guess, educated in, in that style and movement. Um, but I think you see a little bit of that here already. Maybe he already was kind of inclining towards those um, themes and motifs in his art because the the figure of Moroni is so prominent here. Um, and and I think I think that's an interesting example of how artists can can do some theological work um, with their pieces. And and I just um so I want to ask you like how do you see um, some of that emphasis on on the figure and the hands and the plates here working together and um and how might that relate to theological approaches to reading these scriptures yeah so i i've really enjoyed thinking about this image and you see me looking at it i'm looking i'm yeah. looking at the image here um there are a few things that that really strike me about this it is it the image comes through a contrast, right? Through the shadow and the and the light. It's 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 monochromatic. You have it's a it's a charcoal image, right? So you have right. where you have the charcoal and then where you don't. And that's that's what comprises the image. And this um shadow and light creates, I think, in some respects, kind of a sense of emptiness or hollowness. Yeah. It looks as though he's seated on a log. And it looks like it might be a hollowed out log. Um, hard to tell exactly, but but might be with the way that the uh, the shadows work. And he is, it's not quite that he's just seated comfortably in a sort of um, secure way. It seems like he's kind of turned a little bit, maybe ready to move, looking at something else in the distance. 
Um, and then you have the shadow on one side of his face and, and the light on the other. And where, where I'm going with all this is that it seems like there's um, this difference with the shadow. There's a hollowness and a kind of there's it's all a play of what's there and then what is empty space to create this image, mm-hmm. which I think is really interesting for he he, you know, as we we're talking about, he's addressing the absent reader. He's addressing who isn't there, um, and that there there are spaces that it's it's what is missing, and then what is there that contrast that creates the image at all. And I think you can see that in some respects as there is a remnant. There's just a, a small piece of the of the covenant people that are expected to survive for all this time across time across space. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of, it might even feel a little bit like shouting into the void. So we're getting this kind of emptiness and absence, uh, light and shadow. But what's remarkable is, I mean, with just a little, with just one color and then, uh, uh, a little bit of work for creating the image, you get, you get this striking image of, of Moroni and the plates. Mm-hmm. Similarly, God says with one, with, with a remnant with a small remnant of this large civilization that has we've tracked throughout the book of Mormon, he can bring the covenant back. Um, And I think it's a really beautiful, um, hopeful Mm -hmm. way of understanding how God works with us. Um, It doesn't have to be full and overpowering. Just a little bit is something that God can work with a little bit of righteousness, a little bit of, survival a little bit of remembering all of those things yeah Sharon I love that reading um and the the symbolism that you're seeing here as you were talking it also brought to my mind um in Mormon chapter 8 verse 16 um if you don't mind I'll just read a little bit he says and blessed be he that shall bring this thing to light for it shall be brought out of darkness unto light according to the word of God Yea, it shall be brought out of the earth, and it shall shine forth out of darkness, and come unto the knowledge of the people, and it shall be done by the power of God. And what you were just saying about this contrast, this very stark contrast between light and dark, and the shadows, and the spotlights, um, like maybe there's some symbolism there too that the artist is bringing in about the the sort of that these plates and this covenant, right? It is yeah. in darkness, but it will come to light. Um, and Moroni himself is in this really dark moment, having witnessed yeah. the collapse of his entire civilization and the loss of all his family and friends. But but yet Moroni goes on to to be an angel, right? And, and to right. like bring the restoration to you know with Joseph Smith and the return of the plates. Um, so again, to appear in light, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. I imagine that when he's writing this part of it he's probably found some sort of um, hiding place, maybe a cave or something, something dark, something hidden away so that he's not found. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful contrast to how we know him in the restoration. He appears in light in Joseph Smith's room and, you know, tells him about the plates. Um, Yeah. That's that's a, that's a great verse to, to show from this. Um, And there's something about, you know, the light versus the dark, um, what's absent, what's present. I really enjoyed thinking through this piece because as you talked about, I wrote the brief theological introduction on Enos, Jerem, and Omni. And Omni is another place where we're at the end of the plates. We're at the end of the record. It's the end of the small plates. Mm-hmm. And the the final writer there, Amalekai, at the end of the book of Omni, um, he's sharing his testimony of Christ, very similar to what Moroni is doing here, and says, you know, this is how you this is how you come unto Christ, and and says this is the way that we can be saved, that we can find joy, that we can uh, come together. And then he thinks he's done. This is in verse 26 of Omni. Um, but it seems that he decides to keep writing. Mm-hmm. And so he writes about uh these people that that left um looking for the land of their inheritance and he says i have a brother that was among them and i don't know where they are all right um 
And similarly, Moroni seems to think that this uh, chapter seven, eight, nine are going to be the end of his record, and then he'll he'll put the compilation of the Book of Ether in, but that he's he's going to be done. And then as we know, we get the Book of Moroni that follows, where he says, you know, I've got some more time. It seems like he survived longer than maybe he expected to. Right. And he says, I guess I'll, I'll add to it some more. And, and in both cases, we have somebody who is utterly alone. Well, I don't know that Amalekai was alone, but he's missing his brother. Mm-hmm. They're at the end of the record, and then they decide, you know what, there's more I can say um, in in kind of this waiting out time to to hope that there's something that, that, that there's some way of, of reaching out or reaching for uh, these other members of their family, whether it's Malachi's brother or, or Moroni reaching for the future readers of the Book of Mormon. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I know you mentioned the, the, the charcoal medium here, mm-hmm. and I do feel like the effect that that medium creates is, is kind of a haunting Um, very melancholy sort of a feeling. Um, And I just, I was looking in the Book of Mormon art catalog at some other images of this scene um, of, of, of Moroni alone with the plates and um, you know, other artists tend to do it um, in a more colorful, more sort of um, realistic kind of naturalized sort of way. Um, Sometimes even a photorealist kind of a way. Um, I like that Larry Prestwich is um, giving us more of sort of an idea here than trying to like take a snapshot of a moment. But um, I think the medium he's used and the way he's portrayed Moroni, like like you pointed out as sort of this like almost ready to run at a moment's notice, right? That it, right. it really adds to, to the mood of um, what Moroni is going through here. Did you have any other thoughts on that oh yeah it's such a striking it's such a striking image i think you're right about the medium doing that about his position the title um is interesting to me and even i remain alone um in the i mean there's various ways of of studying this royal skousen has done a comprehensive um textual study of the Book of Mormon and all the different editions of it, the original manuscript, the printer's manuscript, um, the first publication, then it's it's uh, published again in, you get a new edition in 1837. The church takes over the editions in 1920. And so he's gone through and compared all of these. And there are some variations from edition to edition. Well, this one, um, so, and then he he puts what he thinks might have been the earliest version Oh. together in this edition here. So Thank you. The, the earliest text, yeah. And this is published by Yale. Um, and in, for the most part, much of it is very similar. But there is a, a difference for this verse here um, in Mormon chapter 8. Okay. Um, and the, the verse of this title. Uh, what we have that, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints produces says, and even I remain alone. But in the first printing, it said, um, and I, even I, remaineth alone. And so there's this this repetition of the I, even I, um, and it seems like you you can feel the hauntingness of it, and also the the solitariness of it. That everything else is there's no one else here, even I, and it's all kind of collapsed into this lonely, wandering, solo figure. Uh, and I think, I mean, obviously, Royal Skousen hadn't done this work yet, um, and Larry Prestwich is using the the title from the verse that he has. But there's something I think with a lot of pathos to mm-hmm. to think about this. With the the first version of this verse was, "I even I remaineth alone," and that emphasis of it's just me in this verse. I feel like you get from that from the image as well. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. And it, you know, it helps me, I feel like, relate a little bit in my own life when there are times when I feel alone or, um, I don't know, betrayed, <laughs> right? That, um, that I know that, that other, um, prophets, uh, prophets and other people in the scriptures have gone through that and, um, and that Christ was st- still with them through that. 
Right, right. And he says in chapter nine, so just a little bit later in the section for this week, um, he, let's see, yeah, in verse 11, he says, but behold, I will show unto you a God of miracles. Mm-hmm. Um, and and even as he's completely alone, he's watched his father be killed, he's watched his entire civilization be destroyed. Um I'm I'm really struck by his faith. It he, he's he's haunted, but also um, with the faith to do what he can, and says, "I'll, I'll show you a God of miracles." Mm-hmm. And even addressing and saying, "I can show you a God of miracles," he's he has the faith to presume that there will be people that will get to read this. Yeah. That they'll they can also know that, and and that and that they get to read it is one of the miracles. It seems that that we can turn to have hope in yeah beautiful um dr harris thank you so much for joining us today i really appreciated you walking us through these these um chapters and i think the artwork really helped bring it alive for me thank you yeah thank you